students from Southeast Elementary.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Syston Public Schools Stadium, home at the Bulldogs. We've got a good one tonight. It's the Bulldogs versus the rival from the north, the Cape Central Tigers. It's homecoming night. I'm Jeff Williams filling in for Derek James, who's a little under the weather tonight. Joined to my left here is Matt Tanner. Matt, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for filling in on a... Uh, bring the lefty out of the bullpen, so to speak. <laughs> Je Jeff and I, if you don't know, uh, Jeff and I are the duo for the, the Bulldog basketball uh, YouTube telecast, and Jeff was gracious enough to fill in for uh, Derek James, like you said, is uh, one of the weather. Deej, I hope you're feeling better. I, I, I sense that you are because you've been texting me some, <laughs> so uh, I, I'm glad you're feeling better and hope to see you back soon. Um, yeah, Jeff, it's a uh, this is one of my favorite nights of the whole year, our homecoming tailgate. I mean, just to see uh, all of, I mean, all of our uh, crowd here. I mean, we have all the tents, the businesses, churches, whatever has a tent out there. All the schools have tents, and there's probably, I mean, I mean literally, I, I didn't count them, but there's got to be a thousand people. I mean, this thing is crazy. Raise money for the foundation, which is uh, again the main reason for that, but. Just to see all of uh, all of our fans and our our uh, community together, and we're not separated. The only the one common thing is Jeff, we're Bulldogs right now. That's right. At, at the tailgate, and we're not separated by any political division or religious division or any 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 way that we seem to be subdivided. For several hours today and tonight, we're Bulldogs, and that's that is fantastic well said my friend well said Thanks, yeah sir. bulldog nation has yes. come together uh, i guess we've been doing the tailgating how long matt oh gosh uh, maybe so 10 12 years yeah it, it started it, it, and it took off probably 15 years ago maybe mm -hmm. and then it kind of sputtered then it kind of regained new life again probably really strong for, like you said past I remember uh, one of those playoff games. Well, yeah, we, we had a huge tailgate yeah, it was situation. Right before Ledoux. Yes, yeah, we had and Ledoux, and we tail we were out here on the practice field. But this, this is the tailgate for homecoming. Yes, that we've had. I yeah. think that's where the idea kind of I think you may kind be of right. Originated, and that was though. in two thousand nine or ten, whatever year that yes. was. And yeah, from then, and so the foundation took it over, which is great because all that money goes back to the students yes uh and the teachers and the classrooms and it's uh just really cool and you and i both witnessed the uh the students from southeast elementary which that were was awesome them. yeah that was so cool yeah. they got to sing the red and the black which if you don't know is our school song and you want to talk about pumped up man they were <laughs> screaming and when they get to the song where they say sykes sykes down they all screamed and pumping their fist i mean that was really cool and i know that uh I don't get here on school talk, but Miss Hollifield, our, our superintendent, uh, from this is her second school year. One of the things that she has made her mission is to bring back or to improve school spirit. How about that? Exactly. Not bring it back, but to improve it. Red and Black Fridays. Yes. Learning the the school song, the Red and the Black, all yep. the way down through the elementary. Yes. Building. So. It, uh, a lot of pride here in the district, and we yep. love to see that. Let's let's yep. just uh, hit on the game for a minute yep. before kickoff. That I think we do have about one minute before <laughs> kickoff. <laughs> we've been we've been uh, we've been sidetracked. Excuse me, I've been sidetracked. No, that's that's all right. It's all good stuff. Cape Central, the Tigers come down. They are three and three. 
Uh, former Sykeston coach, Kent Gibbs. Our old adversary. That's right. He's <laughs> he's up there at Cape Central now doing a great job, mm -hmm. as he did here at Sykeston. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bulldogs have have struggled this year, 0-6 so far. Mm -hmm. I know uh, they are going to be competitive tonight. Yep. Uh, they always show up against Cape Central yep. no matter what the, Throw the, what the sport. Out, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the Bulldogs feel like they have, I know they're 0-6, and uh, feel like they let a couple get away. Uh, Dexter and Kennett uh, felt like that they definitely Kennett and Dexter felt like you know that they they could have won that game too. They didn't ultimately, but uh, Cape's going to be a test for them tonight, and hopefully the Bulldogs can pull off something tonight. Special special win on homecoming. We shall see, my friend. We shall see. Yes, we sir. Bulldogs are kicking off. Cape Central is receiving. They've got a couple receivers back around the 15-yard line. And we're about ready to kick that. This is football weather, isn't it, man? Oh, my gosh. What? So, I mean, today the day started out. I mean, of course, it's beautiful now, but it was just totally sunny and beautiful. Not a cloud in the sky. Then a few clouds came in. I don't think there's any threat of rain, but it's just it's beautiful. I don't know what it says. It's 64. It's supposed to be about 40 degrees in the yeah, morning. It, it's going to drop <laughs> during the, according to uh, Grant Dade, meteorologist yes. Grant Day at yes. KFVS. He said the temperatures will drop during the games tonight. So we shall see. We've got the uh, wind blowing pretty, pretty yeah. good out of the north. Mm -hmm. So that might have some type of uh, effect on the, the game tonight. We, we will see. And I'm not sure what we got going on. A little on confusion here. Yeah. before kickoff. See the white hat. I have no idea. No idea. We're, uh, we're all looking around up here in the booth. There's scratching something our head. on the field near the uh, north end zone. I don't know if that would, would hold it up. I, yeah, I can't imagine that holding it up. Coaches are motioning to something up. Up in the stands or back behind the press box. I don't know. So do have a delay here mm -hmm. before the kickoff. Players are trying to stay warm, get loose and stretched out. Jeff, I haven't seen Kate play this year. I'm not sure what sort of offensive scheme that they that they have. I would assume just knowing Coach Gibbs, I would assume that he's got some athletes up there. Now let's don't, let's you don't, betcha. Let's, let's don't draw or gloss over that, but I would say some sort of spread, uh, get his guys in space, especially his playmakers, his receivers, skill players, as they say, your uh, receivers, a quarterback, uh, guys like that. And we will say they're going to have some team speed too, so we're going to have to really uh, mind our assignments tonight on defense and, and tackle very, very well to uh, slow this team down. Yeah, we mentioned Coach Gibbs when he was here at Sykeston for about a three or four year period there. Sykeston had some really, really talented teams. Mm -hmm. uh, Good as any team around here. At quarterback that time. at the quarterback quarterback position, they had Jaqueline Wiggins and mm -hmm. then followed by Trey Lewis. And uh, Jaqueline that year was like class four player of the year. I, I believe or so. Offensive player of the year maybe or whatever it was and then yeah, and the, that the year when when Jaquelin was quarterback, Trey Lewis was a receiver mm -hmm. that was outstanding. And then the following year, he became the quarterback. Was he took that to another level? And of course, cuts what Coach Gibbs ran with with those athletes and those kids. He ran uh, sort of a spread, spread offense. offense mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I again, I haven't seen them play, but I, that's what I would assume that they're doing. We're Still don't know what the delay yeah. is. We're waiting and yeah, we're no, we're no as words confused from as anybody up here. Yeah, we're trying to find out what's going on. Seems. Oh, uh, are they short and official? Maybe is there five? And there's only four? Maybe. Am I seeing four? I or see one, two, three, four, five. No. I think there's a fifth one out there. 
Yeah. Where's the other one? There's four in the group. Yeah, that's what, that's what he and said. There there's was one, one out here by the. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, no, that's not it. I actually, he's right behind a, this window bar. I couldn't see him. Okay. <laughs> so well, I guess that's not it. And so I guess they have five man crews, right? Okay. Yes. Well, it's not the. Hmm. Well, Mr. Bidler checked with the uh, radio guys and. They don't have an answer either. No, no. Um, Deej, you're out there somewhere. You got any idea? <laughs> Shoot us a text. Guess we can talk a little bit yeah. about uh, Mizzou football. Yes, sir. They have a big game tomorrow. Big game. Versus LSU coming to Columbia. Somebody just texted me and said we're waiting for Taylor Swift <laughs> to be seated. I guess she's with Kelsey. <laughs> she's Well, that's been something, hasn't it? Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe we – all right. Andy, Mr. McGill is walking on the field with a bucket. Maybe there's a <laughs> spot of turf that's messed up. Maybe I – <laughs> I can't see it from here, but the four officials are. Is that a throw up bucket? It's I'm gathered sorry. around a spot on the field. So, yeah. Okay, I'm getting, maybe some, some input now. Maybe some chewed up turf of some sort. Yeah, I guess there is some sort of. <laughs> I guess that did the trick. I'm getting all sorts of uh, input, but I don't think they're they're fit for fit for uh, not public. appropriate. Yeah, they're not, they're not appropriate. All right, okay, we we're heard about there was a hole in the off. field. Okay, our hole in the turf, and that's what and Mr. McGill wanted to put it in or fill in. Now we're ready. Let's go. There's the kick. Hey. Good kick. Good kick. Uh oh. Off the hands That's, of. I was gonna say. I think. Kate I think Central. in high school, if it breaks the, the the plane of the end zone, I think it's, it's automatic a, touch mm -hmm, back mm -hmm, on that. Mm -hmm. Is so, it? Don't go. Cape Central will take over at the twenty yard line. Yeah, that's what. Because I think. Is the NFL twenty five or, or or college maybe twenty five? College is twenty five. Yeah. Everybody. Deej and I usually get. Uh, we're thinking of a rule, and we're thinking of an NCAA rule or an NFL rule, and we'll yeah. get them all jumbled up here. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. Cape Central s starts out with a shotgun formation, a handoff up the middle. His running backs broke it down the sideline here. He cuts back, and he's going to be tackled at the Bulldog. Sean Boyd. 40-yard line. Ooh. First play from scrimmage goes... 40 yards. <laughs> well, that's an Keyshawn that an Aus Boyd. Is that an auspicious or inauspicious beginning? I don't. How about one very good beginning? It wasn't a very good yeah, start. How about that? I thought you were the. You got the master's degree or specialist, or whatever. You're supposed to know what that is. Second play from scrimmage goes about nine yards on the handoff. Zaire Thomas, I, I've heard that name. I thought he was a quarterback. I think he was. Maybe they switched. At one, yeah. one time. Who's their quarterback now? What I can't read. Can't see the number. Yeah. Second Eight, down 18? and second down and one. There's a 14, Jathan Spain. Looking to throw is oh. almost picked off. <laughs> almost a pick. Yeah, the quarterback is number 14, Oof. Jathan Spain, who's a 6'5 <laughs> <Six five>. sophomore. <laughs> sophomore. Wow. Ooh. Now you can see him when he's out there. He's head, foot, head taller than everybody else out there. The young lad, as they say, or big, big lad. 
6-5 sophomore for Cape Central. Third down and one, he hands off, run up the middle. He's okay. gonna get first down, but only a couple yards. First down, Tigers. Zaire Thomas with the carry. Ball is at the 28-yard line of the Bulldogs. We got 10:30 and counting in the remaining in the first quarter. Jeff, our our uh, D line is going to have to do a little bit better there and control more of the of the line of scrimmage for us to get a little pressure in their backfield and slow some of these runs down. Spain rolls out to his left. Finds the receiver, nice catch. And a pickup of about 15 yards for the first down. Hey, what? That kid is impressive. The Spain kid, be 6'5", and can move like that and throw it on the run. Kind of on the, the, the rolling against the grain, so to speak, exactly. on the wrong side. Threw across his body there. Do it Hits right. Thomas with the reception. Mm -hmm. Ball at the 11. Hand off up the middle. Is that Boyd again? And he's going to get a touchdown. As he crosses into the end zone. Impressive drive by the Tigers to start this game. Man. Are they kicking? Yeah. Yeah, on for the extra point is the kicker. wonder, didn't Coach Gibbs, when he was here, didn't we run like a swinging gate sort of? We did. And it doesn't look like we're doing anything like that here. He's just going for a straight extra point unless he runs a fake. But Hayden Bowers, number 42. Got a Not flag sure on the jumped. play. Offsides. Offsides, Sykeston. Oh, now Cape no. Central <laughs> decides they are going to go for the two-point conversion. Got yeah. a little closer. We're shifting personnel around here. I was going to say, hopefully we get off the field in time, just like we did. Going for two is the Tigers. Wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of Another one of those rollout plays, and he may keep this one. Nope. Hand off to Boyd, and that he gets good stopped. There. Good, good tackle. Good job, defense. Good job. Luke Gadbury leading the. Yeah, Luke Gadbury with a nice stop. Yep. From his the linebacker position. Yeah, he stopped the carrier before the line of scrimmage. Yep. Six zero Cape Central here in the early going of the first quarter. A little under ten minutes to go. Again, we have a strong, pretty strong wind out mm -hmm. of the north, about it, 15, 20 miles an hour. Yep. You can see it really blowing the flag here in the south end zone. I was going to say, I, I would keep an eye on Coach Gibbs here. He wouldn't be past him to uh, uh, onside kick this thing. I think, make, and I'm sure uh, Coach Pulley and the staff are telling our kids, just be ready for it. If you remember, he did, he would do that quite often. Not today. Oh, so short kick. Short though. kicks. End over end yep. kick and okay, fielded by the Bulldogs at about the 26 yard line. Yep, good idea. It was Peyton Mitchell. It was a good idea. Just take it and get to the ground and let's start from the 26. <laughs> First offensive play for Sykeston. 
Cape Central player jumped off sides. You know, Jeff, seems the, the Bulldogs, I don't know if you watched a whole lot this year, but we started out with some double tight, double wing, and, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of yes. uh, trickeration sometimes. <laughs> and we've, we've uh, changed a little bit. Uh, we've got a different quarterback tonight. Who is it? It's Luke Gadbury. Gadbury. Oh, what's a change? Did we just give it back to him? Yep. Okay, false start for, for the Bulldogs. Go back to their original line of scrimmage, five yards back. Yeah, it was Gadbury. Luke Gadbury is the quarterback. Okay, I'm not sure. Did he start last week too? Okay, he did not. Okay, this is the first week. Gadbury looks to throw. Got a man. Oh! oh. <laughs> nice looking throw by <laughs> Gadbury. Really was that a boy, Luke? Wow, that'd have been a heck of a catch, but. Yeah, he was looking for Trey Gorman Ooh. around the 50 yard line, and wow, they almost made a connection. That would have been a nice play right out of the shoot. It's a I nice like throw it. by Gadbury. Great throw. He's a really good athlete. He was a catcher on the mm -hmm. baseball team mm -hmm. last spring. Mm -hmm. Here's a handoff. Not much there. A flag on Flags the play. coming in. Maybe a face mask, or that might be in the area of holding one or the other. Well, waiting on the flag here. It's That's actually on Cape side of the ball. Yep, face, face mask. mask. Yep. Deej, was that a we call it a was that a garden variety or was that a personal <laughs> foul? But I think they're all personal fouls in high school. Yeah, it's a it's a fifteen yarder, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. That's what John Madden. That was just a garden variety face mask. It was just a five yarder. <laughs> fifteen yards. That's automatic first down yes, for the Bulldogs. Okay. Moves the ball to the forty yard line. Nine twenty nine and counting. Look, whoa, look like a change up there. Who is that with the ball? Oh, Trez Clark. Trez Clark, what junior like. for Syston. With the carry picks up about two yards. Mm -hmm. The snap looked like a change up, didn't it? Had a had a hump in it there. Kind of messed up the timing. Second and eight. Whoa. Are they moving again? Is that us or them? I think it was Cape Central jumped off sides. <laughs> Derek said some are garden variety, some are personal foul. <laughs> Bulldogs are moving the ball down the field. And they are. By way of the penalties. Yes, yes. It's 20, 25 yards of penalties. Now we've had five of our own. Hand off to Clark again. Loses a yard. And to me, it looks like Cape is what's called stack in the box. What that means is from the uh, line of scrimmage, from the down lineman to your linebackers, they're putting eight, nine guys in that, that little square there or, or rectangle that they call the box. And they're essentially... Darren Saxton to throw the ball is what it looks like to me, and they're just almost selling out for the run. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the box there. Gadbury runs with it this time. He's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Like a wildcat play almost, just to put an extra blocker out there, so to speak, but nothing doing that time. Fourth and ten. Bulldogs will punt. Well, Riddle, I don't, well, I don't want to jinx him, but he's usually, he's punted the ball very good this year. He's got the wind behind him. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he does here. Good punt. Uh -huh. You get, oh, man. It's going to roll all the way oh, into oh. the end zone. A really good punt. I was hopeful that thing might make a left turn, Clyde, and stay out of the end zone, but it rolled on in. 
Weren't you related to a guy that knew a little bit about punting? Or he says he did anyway. He says he does. Yeah. His claim to fame to me was always he led the nation in punting one, one year. <laughs> they had the very first game of the season. <laughs> <laughs> and he beat the, he beat the other guy in his punting stats. So he said he led the nation. <laughs> I guess. I think it was because the other team never had to punt. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow he had forgotten to tell me yeah. that part of the story. I think it was a high scoring game <laughs> in favor of the other team. <laughs> Here's a run by Cape <laughs> Central. Off the left tackle, and they pick up about four or five yards. Second down. We'll say second down and six for the Tigers. 59-yard punt on that last punt, Jeff. Of course, it was a net 39, but that's, that's still pretty good. A really good punt. Good tackling good there by the there. Bulldogs. Yeah. Yeah. Gang tackling there. Zaire Thomas on the carry. Guy gets picked up there. one yard, yeah. Get in there and blow that up and wait for the troops. Good set of, or set of downs so far for the Bulldogs. Big third down here. Get their offense back on the field and Maybe get halfway decent field position with a with a stop here. Uh oh, what we got going on? Delay of game. Oh really? Oh, interesting. Backs cat Cape Central up another five yards. Okay. So third and nine. Do you think Jeff? Do you think they're going to throw it here? I think so. They had yeah. three receivers lined out. Lined up to the left. They're, um, you know, it's a big time problem to throw a pick on this end of the field, obviously. But we we missed one. If you remember in that first series, Coach Gibbs calling timeout here with 5:50 remaining in the first quarter. Timeout on the field, and we central passing situation. Got a receiver in motion, and Spain drops back, rolls out to his left, throws across his body. All right. All right, defense. All Good right. Good stop by the Bulldogs. Okay. I still would not put it past Coach Gibbs to throw a fake at us here. Just he's got some athletes on that end. Just don't turn around and not pay attention here. Fourth and nine. I don't know who their kicker is, but he looks swift of foot. Okay. All Not right. Very good Get out punt. of the way. Even yeah. better. Look at that. That's going to turn out to be about wow. a five-yard punt. <laughs> What's his number? <laughs> 30. Is that Torrance Murray? Five, y five yards, okay, well. Seiston, we great field position after that punt. Fortuitous bounce. <laughs> <laughs> Your extensive vocabulary tonight is impressive. I, well, I, I, I knew, see. Uh, you had to bring the A game. I did, I did. I, you know, Deach and I don't get a chance to do this often. To, we got a guy of higher intellect in here with us. <laughs> Deach is way higher intellect than I am. <laughs> And so uh, you've even taken stepped the game up. So I've been studying all day. Oh, wow. Had the, <laughs> had had the, the uh, dictionary yeah. and the thesaurus That's out. That's right. Pickup of three by Gadbury on the quarterback oh. keeper. Are they not offsides? I guess not. They're not. They haven't thrown the flag yet. Changing we, the play here. So we may burn a timeout. Clock's winding down. He's going to get it off. And off up the middle is Clark. Picks up about three yards. It's going to be third and three. Sykeston. Sykeston's inside the Cape Central 20. 
Inside the old red zone. See what the coaches call up for this play. And off to Clark mm. again, and nothing going this time. So for fourth and fourth and five, maybe yeah, four or five. I think we got to go. Well, I don't think we're. Yeah, the Bulldogs will go for it. Got several guys watching tonight, Jeff. Uh, got Mr. Levin Cox, Mr. Jimmy Gadbury, Mr. Derek James. Those guys are watching. Mr. Blake DeWitt texted me as well. Those guys okay. are all watching. Thanks for watching, fellas. We appreciate it. Yeah, stay with us. Nope, got a timeout. Timeout for the Bulldogs. We will take a timeout also, and we will be right back. Back here at Sykeston Public School Stadium, and uh, Bulldogs are lined up for a field goal. Yeah, that's. See, this will be about a 36 yarder. Who is this kicking? Oh, Mauricio Bautista. Mauricio Bautista. Yep. Soccer player. See, I was going to say, it must be a soccer player. Mauricio lines it up, Get and that's there. a good kick. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a real good kick. Oh, no way. What? I guess they said it was just wide. I don't know which direction. <laughs> it looked like it was right down the middle from here. Okay. We just learned it's his first game back off a broken collarbone. That was a fantastic kick. Looked really good. I, obviously, it was wide one way or the other because that had plenty of distance yeah, and plenty of height. We don't have a really good view no, to see it no. up here. Yeah, Mauricio broke that collarbone, I believe, in the very first soccer game this oh, season. Wow. wow. And, awesome. Uh, it's good to... Have him back here at yeah, least that's, playing football what, and kicking the ball. That's a weapon, man. If you can do that in high school, that is a weapon. He's, He's a, a freshman. freshman. He's a freshman. All right, defense doing a good job of standing him up. That's Boyd on the carry. He picks up three. Three. Three twenty and counting in the first quarter. Back to that uh, field goal. Yeah. Attempt, Matt. That was a 36-yard mm. attempt, and uh, Mauricio had plenty, oh, yeah. <laughs> plenty of distance on plenty that. Plenty of distance. He could have kicked a 50-yarder. Yep. Mr. Rod Anderson chiming in, giving me some scores. Scott City over Chaffee in the first quarter, 14-7. to And Jackson. Spain Ooh. throws one. Oh, yes. it. oh, oh almost gosh. intercepted. Was that Colt? No, not Colt. That may have been Bo. That's Bo Riddle. Yep, Bo Riddle oh. almost came Sorry, down Bo. with one. Jackson's up 21-0 over Confluence in the first quarter. I tell you, that uh, I'm not being critical of, of the young man, the Spain kid, because I don't know him, but typically the cardinal sin is throwing back the other way. When you're rolling out, throwing the other way is right for a It's for tough a to do. It yeah. is. It's tough. Well, and it, it's that should have been picked off. And that's why they tell you not to do it, because it's more than likely going to be picked off. Third and seven. Oh, come on, defense. Hand right. off in oh. the Bulldog. Oh, we got that's a flag in thrown in. the area in. of holding, typically. The backside. Yep. Holding on the almost, Tigers. You almost declined that to go to fourth down. And figure, See what the Bulldogs. Yeah. But I don't. I would. See Coach Pulley, he's looking to try to determine the uh he's trying to determine the what to do here and look at the yardage. Looks like it's gonna be fourth and six, maybe. Yeah. 
penalty is declined. So, yeah, brings up fourth down. Now this could backfire if they don't punt, but it looks like they are going to punt. Fourth and five. Cape Central has the ball at the 30-yard line, their the, own 30. Is that the Murray? Is this his name? Torrance Murray? Low snap. He scoops it up. And oh, he hit his knee. Oh, yeah, he touched the ground. Oh, okay. A big break oh, for the Bulldogs. Gosh. Referee was all he over was. that. was. I was like, what did he call? Oh, but his knee was on the ground. Yeah. That uh, it was a bad snap, so the punter had to uh, pick it up. And when he did, his knee hit the turf. Yeah. And the ball was automatically down. And he's down. In high school and in college, if your knee hits the ground with the ball, you are automatically down. So Sykeston <laughs> takes over being uh, um, deep in Cape Central territory, about the 16-yard line. Gadbury keeps it. All right. Nice pick. A couple up. yards, yeah. I was wondering. <laughs> it's one of my one of my one of our millions of viewers texted me and wanted to know if right down the middle. Oh no, maybe not. He said is the game sponsored by LASIK Eye Center. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we don't have a great angle and hey, I and it I It looked full, right down the middle to me. <laughs> I'm full of optimism, all right? <laughs> Both of us. We were just impressed by the kick. Heck, yeah. Take that to the house. Trez, had a baby. Trez, okay. nice run. Cut back close to the first down marker. It's about two yards short. It's a big third down right here for the big Bulldogs. Big third down. Pick this up. What do you call here? They, they run a little... Um, like a double handoff that they have been crazy successful with, but I don't know if you can run it down here, and I don't, I don't know what uh, set we run this out of, but it's like we're trying to go deep in the playbook here, find something that can pick up a couple, because we can still get a first down before we score. And uh, Clark, and he's tackled. That wasn't the right call, as they say. Yeah, it's that brings up the fourth and. Six. We kick it again. Maybe we'll we'll see. I don't see Mauricio. No, looks like we're going for this one. So Sherrod came Sherrod out. Sherrod is he's in right. He's in. He's in yeah. on the field. Under one under a minute to go. And nothing doing there. Cape Central. Tackles the ball carrier. Kenneth Holcomb? Is that who was running the ball for us? 24? 24. Mm -hmm. Freshman. So Sykeston turns it over on downs. Cape Central takes over at the 16. 43 seconds to go in the first quarter. We Oh yeah, in the uh, in between. Oh, well, I'll say that here in a minute. Hand off to Cape Central ball carrier. He picks up Got a couple defense. yards. The uh, in between the first and second quarter, Jeff, the, uh, the school is going to recognize the uh, big dog sponsors of the tailgate. Okay. And so, just the the level of of giving for that, and they'll be recognized um, from the north end zone. That could be the last play of the yeah, first clock, quarter. Clock's inside 10 seconds here in the first quarter, and Cape Central's in no hurry. So, yeah. No. Looks like we're going to end that one on last play of the first quarter. Okay, that's it. Brings us to the end of the first quarter. Cape Central 6 Sykeston Zero. We will take a break and be right back.
back here. A long run by Cape Central uh -oh. to start off the second quarter. Is he going to be caught? I don't think so. He's going to make it. Well. And that's a long touchdown run by Cape Central. No flags on the field. Like an 80-yarder. 80-yarder they took over at the 20. First play of the second quarter, just like the first offensive play mm -hmm. of the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks like we came out, I don't know, maybe not ready. I don't know exactly. But it's almost like a flip was, or switch was flipped because we just bottled up everything else. Kick is up and... I'm not. I'm not even yeah, saying. I'm not going to attempt. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll wait on the referees right, this time. I'm going to look at the officials. I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I also heard that uh, you were going to be challenging anyone to a pickleball contest. <laughs> Fifty dollars, he said. Fifty dollars per game. From Mr. Gadbury, he said, you, he said you'll play anybody for $50, I'll, I guess, right? I won't play anybody, but I'll, <laughs> I'll play somebody. <laughs> 13-0 Cape Central. 11.48 left to go in the second quarter. They're, they've had some, obviously, some offensive uh, yardage, but it's been basically on two plays. Two long plays from scrimmage resulted in touchdowns for the Tigers. And from the same young man, Mr. Boyd, probably 120 yards rushing on yeah. those two plays. I'm not smart, but that's an average of 60 per play, Jeff. <laughs> Pretty good average. Here's the kick coming up to take that kick as Clark and gets out to about the 35-yard line. Dres Clark caught that one on the run. He just kept on going. Just pushed out going. of bounds. Yeah, pushed out of bounds over here on the Bulldog side. Gadbury looks to throw. That's a nice play. That's Fines. Just up Trey Gorman, the number one. Four or five. That's a, it's almost like a pitch and catch. Just, me, just immediately turn and throw. That's pretty hard to defend, I'll have to say. I mean, I've, that's glad that, nice to see that play work. Second and six for the Bulldogs. Gadbury looks to run. Goes right up the middle with it. Picks up a couple yards. Yep. It's going to be third and four for Sykeston. Ball is at the 40-yard line. We've got 10.45 left here in the first half. Whoa. Oh, oh he had nice him. He was open. Try, yeah. Caden was open that time. Oh. Three, Kenneth Holcomb, the freshman, on the halfback toss. Yeah. Halfback pass, I guess. Nice try by the Bulldogs. Mm. Yep. Fourth and four, Bulldogs will punt. Again, they are going into the win mm -hmm. this quarter. Got a fake punt, takes wow. off with it, and oh. he stopped a little shy, <clears throat> excuse me, a little shy of the first down marker. That's a um, 
I'm not sure, Jeff, is that a read or you think that's a call? You know, sometimes you can you read what the defense is doing and then go ahead sure. and run the fake, but I'm not yeah. sure on that. I actually did not. Couldn't he tell. may have had the option, like you said. Yeah. If you see it, take off, not kick it. Mm -hmm. Cape Central takes over at the Bulldog 40. Right, let's keep our head on the swivel here. This first play. Just the, oh, good job there. Good tackle. Stack it. Well, it was down a couple of times. Demarius Brown made contact there. Big 6'2", 295. Mm -hmm. Zaire Thomas is a load, too. Both he and the Boyd kid. Make a pretty good one-two punch, well, don't they, in the backfield? About? Wow. Thunder and lightning, it looks yeah. like. What's and, the, and what's the thunder's th not too slow. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to look at the weight. Boyd says 6'190", and Zaire 5'6", 165. Okay. 165 might be a little... Uh, a little off. I'm uh, saying a little. Might have given him a little. Okay. But I don't know. Maybe maybe so. I can't. He looks diminutive in stature from here. Maybe he does weigh 165. Oh, they had that bottled up. Oh, all right. All right. Pick up about three yards. Makes it third down and oh, probably four. I would guess here. Outside of a just a disastrous loss of ten or something yards, Cape Central's probably in four down territory. Would you? I agree. Yeah, yeah this just where they are on the field probably dictates that more than anything. Exactly right. I see a lot of people have come into town for homecoming. Mm -hmm. Some of these folks coming back to uh -oh, around the corner, and it's going to be another touchdown for the Tigers. Not did a, we did not do a good job on the contain there. And he got outside and turned Thomas, the Jets on. Thomas has good speed, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Got around that end and just nobody was going to catch him. Hey, 19 to nothing with 8.51 left in the second quarter. Got a flag on the play, maybe. Do you think we jumped, maybe? Not sure. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Did they decline it? Oh. See what happens here. Earlier when that happened oh. on a yeah, extra they, point, they yeah. brought out the uh, team to try to score a two-pointer. It's it's only half the distance to the to the uh, to the goal line, and they were getting their kicker and their holder were kind of Lord have mercy. Let's say he may bring in the two point conversion squad here in just a minute. Yeah, it looks like they're going for two. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's what. Well, they're. Down around the one yard line now yeah, after two be, penalties. Yeah, yeah. Maybe mm. probably inside the one yard line. I mean, I like the aggressiveness, but you can't can't make those mental mistakes by jumping off sides. I mean, I can't be so aggressive that you hurt your team. I guess they're just going to pound this thing up the middle with Boyd. Or, or Thomas. And the two-point conversion is successful for Cape Central. 21-0 Tigers. We're about midway through the second quarter. I've seen a lot of, uh, I mentioned this briefly while ago before the touchdown, but a lot of people from out of town mm -hmm. back here visiting for homecoming. It's a 
it's hard to see the the crowd, but just from my vantage point, it looks like we got a really nice crowd tonight. Nice crowd. The weather helps in the tailgate and all those things. And you know, give the football team a nice nice support here tonight on homecoming. Is the dance? I guess the dance is dance tonight. Is tonight. And I guess at halftime they'll announce homecoming candidates Probably. queen, I suppose. That's what they normally usually, do. Yeah, yeah, normally do. Yeah. I know they had a pep assembly today, and I – Holcomb again. Yep. We, he's had a lot of uh, – Nice boy. run up the sideline. A lot of action tonight. He has. Halfback pass and some runs and – now a kick return. He is a freshman. Mm -hmm. Five eight one fifty freshman for Sykeston. Looks like a good player. Sykeston takes over at the forty. Trying to get a late sub into to the action here. Gadbury's looking to throw. He's going to oh, there's a find flag. his receiver. A They're going to say no completion on the pass attempt. Yeah, they look like the kid tackled him before he had the ball. It looked like a penalty. but It's Cole be, Parker was yeah. the receiver. The official is a lot closer to the action than I am. What do we know? We couldn't even see the kick earlier. <laughs> that is a good point. That is a good point, Jeff. It's a run like of Caden about Caden two Caden. yards. Yep. Yeah. Trez. Trez Clark. I thought that was Caden. I... Trez Clark has had a lot of action here in the first half. Mm -hmm. But he's run the ball at least eight times. Third and nine and Almost under eight minutes to go now in the second quarter. That wind has picked up. I can it's see that has. flag. I see the flag whipping. Getberry looks to throw. His receiver had not turned around yet. It's Keon Atkins. Brings up fourth and nine for Sykeston. They Luke will look to punt, yeah. I was just going to say, he looked like he was a little bit under duress there, too. Pressure was coming. That, too. I don't know about that, but <laughs> he was under duress. <laughs> oh. That kick is kind of shanked out of bounds. Yeah, I think I think the tendency, Jeff, to kick into the wind is to try to kick it harder, and mm -hmm. I, I get it. Try to uh, you know, pick up a few more yards and because you know the wind's blowing against you. So, And when he did that, just it's a lot like golf when it comes to that. You gotta, can't fight the wind. Because you're not going to beat it. Cape Central takes over at the 45 yard line. Hand off. No, he, Spain keeps it. He's running up the middle off to the right, and he's got more than enough for a first down. A little read option there, and. Uh, that's a hallmark of a Kent Gibbs offense, too, to have that quarterback. What he's doing is reading the keys. He's reading the – whichever side he goes to, he's reading that um, that end. And if the end crashes down, crashes down to make the tackle, he pulls it, so to speak, and keeps it and runs with it around the end. But if the end stays, he gives it to the to the runner. Ooh, now we got a, a pitch here. It's almost like a triple option. Boyd. 
Boyd picks up four yards. Second and six. That'll bring his average down. <laughs> 7.26 to go in the second quarter. Spain hands off to Boyd again up the middle. We got a late flag. It's on the... Like on the Sykes, no, well, no. That may be a holding. That's what it's looking like. Two flags. See the wind blowing, Jeff. I was looking on the radar. I don't see any. No anything. weather out no, there? No, just probably the remnants of that front coming through. The no, it's going to hit the low 40s tonight, they say. Man. Oh, well, I guess. It's oh, offsetting penalties. Yeah, it shows uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. It's going to be 43 degrees. But it's, I mean, even this thing here showing the wind at 7 miles an hour, it's more than 7. It may be 27. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't trust those iPhones. Spain rolls out to his left. He's looking. He's looking. He's All day. Finds a receiver, and they he cannot connect on that pass attempt. He wanted to throw deep. Yeah. Looked like it was all covered up. Bulldogs did a good job. Third and seven for the Tigers. All right, Bulldogs, let's get off the field here. Well, of course, that might be in four-down territory for them again, too. Yeah, I think Cape Central would go for it. More than likely. Especially, again, with the situation, the score, the situation, and position on the field. Spain's looking to throw. He's got a receiver that was open, but... It's incomplete. Yeah, he was open too. Yeah, Thomas was open down there around the 15 yard line. Just underthrew him a little. Brings up fourth down for Cape Central, and they are going to go for it. Hey, what, Jeff? I'm glad I got my hat on when I go out there. It'd mess up my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. Looks like we got it. Seven minutes on the clock, please. Seven minutes on the clock. Not sure what the official is wanting. There we go. The game clock. Or the. Uh, it was the play clock. Trying to get the play, play clock clocked. situated here. Uh oh, double reverse. Yeah, we, we missed it. We missed it. He might score. And he will score. score. They're going to call it. Yep, he's good. Double reverse. Double reverse by the Tigers results in a long touchdown run. Or maybe that's a single reverse, whatever it is. It was It was a reverse, it yeah. Was, well, 27-0 with six minutes, 649 left here in the second quarter. Looks quite chilly outside, Jeff. <laughs> I'm glad we're in the booth right now. Kick is no oh, no good. Yep, no good. No good. It looked that one did look left from here, but 
Dang it, Mauricio's look good. I want to go back and look at that. Yeah, let's, we'll have to pull that up later. I'm going to look tonight when I get home and watch the game again. Twenty-seven zero, Cape Central. It's been in complete control of this one. Six forty-nine left in the first half. Jeff, we've shown some uh, pretty nice defensive efforts there, about two or three possessions in a row, but we our offense couldn't just get on track and. Be a game of what ifs again. I mean, we make that big pick up, pick. Well, we had a chance for two picks at least, right? Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. You, you yeah. Pick those and you take those points off the board, and we've had great field position two mm -hmm. times in a row. I mean, inside the thirty on their on the our end, and uh, nothing yet to come away with it. Another short kick. Another short kick fielded and taken up around the 35-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs will take over. That was Trez, yep, Trez Clark. Bulldog, let's get something going here. Yeah, Barry drops back to throw, finds a nice receiver. Pass. Nice play there. Nice pass. Completed to Caden Craig. Well, DJ and I talk uh, in here a lot and wonder why we don't throw um, more slants. If you ever watch any college football or especially NFL football, mm -hmm. they run that slant all the time. And you know why they run the slant? Because it's extremely hard to defend. It's hard to defend. You are exactly right. Get that slot receiver. And they try to press you on one way or the other, and you take the opposite. Oh boy, Luke. Gadbury keeps it. Runs off to the right about three yards. Mr. Clay Madison, thanks for giving this a shout out. Jeff, quick scores here. Portageville up 42-0 in the second quarter over Malden. Scott City 21-7 over Chaffee in the second quarter. We'll take this play here. Oh. We got one more. Uh, Jackson 49-0 over Confluence. That says in the first quarter. Oof. Hard to score 49 points in one quarter. I'm thinking. What do they say? That escalated quickly. <laughs> wow. Good run by the Bulldogs. Picked up about four yards. Third and three. Sykeston's inside Cape Central territory. See if they can pick up this first down. Big play here. Keep this drive going. Ooh, under center now. Well. Burning that clock up, burning that play clock. Still 10 seconds on the play clock. Just about under five minutes now. Hmm. That's bad snap, and Gadbury had to just jump on it. They lose about five yards on that play. Probably go again would be my guess. Fourth and eight for Sykeston. Whatever that play was we ran while ago, run that sucker again, that little fake pitch, and, well, I'm going to run the high back toss again. Hmm. Incomplete pass. Kate. Cape Central will take over. The 
be a little surprising play call there. I like that. Whatever that first play was right out of the shoot, that little that fake, they actually faked the pitch mm -hmm. to Kenneth and had the receiver run a little drag route underneath. He was open and late, or, uh, excuse me, Luke got it to him right on time and able to pick up a first down. One more score. Mr. Rod Anderson, thank you. Dexter up 21-0 over Kennett in the second quarter. Dexter's having a really good year. And we had a again, we had a realistic chance to beat them. Mm -hmm. And they're five and one, yeah, something they, along those lines. They've had a good season so mm -hmm. far. They've been uh they, I say they, they're talking about the Dexter faithful, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They have sort of pegged this squad. They have they were really young last year. They're all sophomores, so obviously they're all juniors this year, so they'll have one more year to get even better. But they've sort of pegged this group coming up as mm -hmm. one that could be a special group for them. So far they're, they're right, you know, and it's a group of sophomores. You're going to struggle, and they struggled a little bit last year, but they've turned it around this year. Third down and a yard for Cape Central. Spain hands off, and that's going to be a first down for the Tigers. Three clocks. Well, oh, maybe it stops on the first down. They'll probably get cranking here. Yeah. 3.29 and counting in the first quarter. Or excuse me, second quarter in the first half. And the Bulldog, Bulldogs get the ball at third quarter, correct? I believe so. Yeah. Tell hey, you what, he just did a fantastic job of following his blocking there. Sure did. Really good tackle there by Bo, too. He wrapped him up, did the form tackle. Zaire. Showed, shoulder pad right in the gut and sent him to the ground. Yeah, Zaire Thomas, mm -hmm. only a junior. He'll be back next year for these Tigers. Well, Keyshawn Boyd, just a sophomore. Tell you what, they've got some athletes up there, up in the Cape. In the Girardo. We, we do know they have some athletes on the oh basketball my court. Gosh. Whew. Let's see gotta, a flag on the field. Yeah, I'm going to guess a hold just by the position of the flag because when he cut it back, I think that receiver was holding. I thought the white hat threw it, but he's going to talk to him to the. Line judge, yeah, hold, yeah. You can sort of tell that a, mm -hmm. it's a holding penalty by, again, if it's kind of behind the line of scrimmage, that's where the white hat or the side judge or somebody typically throws it. And the white hat is, again, beh right behind the play so he can clearly see the holding calls. And so most of the officials I talk to that officiate high school football say you could just about call a holding on every play. Now they don't, obviously, but I'm sure they catch the egregious ones. But that one was, uh, I guess, really egregious from the call it. First and 20. All right, defense, let's get off the field here. Thomas with the run again. He cuts it back. Still going. That's He's hard to bring down. Uh huh. Shifty and speedy and quick, and strong, and all the athletic. Get back to the original line of scrimmage. Second and ten now looks like. Oh, excuse me, second and nine. Just under two minutes now. Let's see if the Bulldogs can keep the Tigers out of the end zone. Second and nine. Spain hands off to Boyd. Boyd right up the middle. Oof. He's still going. And he's in 
to the end zone. Makes it 33-0, Cape Central. They go, yeah, they're going to go for two to make this 30 and even 35. Looks Looks short. Short. Yeah. All right. Bulldogs <clears throat> did a good job of tackling, kept Thomas out of the end zone. Two point conversion is no good. It's 127 left here in the first half. It's Cape 33, Sykeston 0. Let's see if Sykeston can put something together before the half. See if we can uh, get some points here and maybe get the ball back first and put some more points on the board. <coughs> Another score here, Jeff. East Prairie up 37-0 over Donovan. What in the world? I, I didn't call it then, but I, I'm not surprised. He likes to onside kick a lot. Let's see, the Tigers will take over. At the 49 of Sykeston. Dropping back to pass. Ooh. And it's picked off. Interception. Carter Goodman. Carter Goodman the with the interception. Nice. Got a flag on the play out here. See what that's about. Extracurricular activities maybe. <coughs> it's gonna go against the Bulldogs. A block below the waist. So that'll back us up again. Hand off to Sherrod. Picks up about five yards. We're inside a minute left here in the second quarter. You know, Jeff, those clocks that when they get inside a minute, they start doing the, you know, 47 point, or they do the mm -hmm. 10. Mm -hmm. To me, it seems like the clock runs faster than it obviously doesn't. But you're just looking at the score or at the board, and it's 
Looks like it runs faster. Looks like the Bulldogs called timeout, Jeff. Bulldogs talking it over. We'll just stay with with uh, the field or the action right here. Not sure what we would be discussing. Um, Coaches are talking it over. See what we can draw up here with 36 seconds left here in the first half. What if they try that double handoff thing again? It's uh, really picked up some yardage with that, but don't know if they've installed a new quarterback. I'm not sure. I can't imagine it being in there yet. That's a pretty intricate play for a first week quarterback, but who knows? That's exactly what they ran. That's exactly what they ran, Jeff. <laughs> you called it, Matt. I did I feel like Tony Romo. I did call it. <laughs> That's exactly what they called. Atkins with the run. Inside. Now we're inside 10 seconds. Gadbury drops back, throws one down the sideline. Incomplete. Got three seconds left. Gadbury was looking for Colt Parker. 52 or 62 for the Tigers is limping. I hope he's all right. Sixty-two, Jeff. Number sixty-two. Maxton Pardon. Is that him? I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Lindsay. I'm not a fan either. I just know that the that the <laughs> that the fans all get mad at Tony Romo for thinking he knows the next play. I just happen to get lucky. I'm one for about eight hundred calling plays. <laughs> giving me grief up here for picking the play and then referencing Tony Romo. Thanks. Sorry, Mr. Lindsay. I'll, I'll, I'll do better. <laughs> hey, as I tell Mr. Byler every week, you get what you pay for. <laughs> That's right. That Mr. Byler said to give up my pay to get the uh, all-star Mr. Jeff Williams in here. <laughs> Last play of the half. Nice play there. Completion. Yeah. Daryl Jordan. Daryl uh -oh. Jordan. Got somebody out on the field. You think it's cramping? That's what Mr. Lindsay we'll thinks. see what happened. There's a receiver that was going. Yeah, I think he's cramping maybe. Down the field. Well, he's grabbing his right leg. Is that Kenneth Holcomb? Is that who that is? Yep. That brings us to the end of the first half. Cape Central 33, the Bulldogs 0. We'll be right back with the second half action.
Exhibition.
School is proud to present the five young women nominated to be this year's Fall Homecoming Queen candidates. Our first candidate is Miss Bailey Brown. Bailey is the daughter of Mr. Jason Roach and Mrs. Candace Brown. Bailey is a varsity softball player. She is your 2023 Red Pepper Treasurer a member of National Honor Society, as well as a member of Skills USA. After graduation, Bailey plans on attending a four-year university to pursue a degree in nursing. Bailey is being escorted by Mr. Christian Parker. He is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Howard Parker. Christian is a varsity soccer player. After graduation, Christian will attend a university to pursue a degree in statistics and finance. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Bailey Brown. Our second candidate is Miss Bailey Copeland. Bailey is the daughter of Mr. Jim Copeland and Miss Donna Sanders. Bailey is a varsity volleyball player as well as your 2023 Red Pepper Cayenne. She is a member of the National Honor Society, Student Council, FBLA, DECA, Key Club, FCA, Interact, Link Crew, and is an inspired presenter. After graduation, Bailey will attend a four-year university to pursue a degree in nursing. Bailey is being escorted by Mr. Rush Alt. Rush is a varsity soccer team captain and a varsity baseball player. He is the National Honor Society president, a member of student council, DECA, FBLA, FCA, Key Club, a Bleacher Bums officer and on the Barker staff. Rush is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Nathan Alt. After graduation, Rush plans to attend Mississippi State to pursue a degree in business. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Bailey Copeland. Next, Miss Zoe Evans. As our next candidate, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Chad Evans. Zoe is your 2023 Red Pepper Demerit Chairman, an inspired presenter and on the yearbook staff. After graduation, Zoe plans on attending Southeast Hospital College of Nursing and Health Sciences to pursue a career as an ultrasound technician. Zoe is being escorted by Mr. P.J. Farmer. P.J. is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Farmer Sr. He is a varsity soccer player, varsity basketball player, and a member of the varsity track team. After graduation, PJ plans on attending a university to pursue a bachelor's degree while playing collegiate basketball. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Zoe Evans. Our fourth candidate is Miss Olivia Gadbury. She is the daughter of Mr. Tim Gadbury and Miss Mindy Gadbury. Olivia is a varsity cheerleader and a member of the competition squad. She is a Red Pepper, a member of Link Crew at Skills USA. After graduation, Olivia will attend Southeast Missouri State University to pursue a bachelor's degree. Miss Gadbury is being escorted by Mr. Tristan Wiggins. Tristan is the son of Miss Desiree Wiggins. He is a varsity soccer player and a varsity basketball player. Tristan is a member of Student Council, the Interact Club, and Bleacher Bums. After graduation, Tristan will attend a four-year university to pursue a degree in sports medicine while playing collegiate basketball. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Olivia Gadbury. Our next candidate is Miss Ashley Ivey. She is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Randy Ivey. 
Ashley is a varsity softball player. She's a member of the Red Peppers, World Language Club, and the Interact Club. After graduation, Ashley plans on attending a four-year university to pursue a degree in nursing. Ashley is being escorted by Mr. Caden Parker McRae. He is the son of Mr. Ernest McRae and Miss Keisha Parker. Caden is a varsity cheerleader and a member of the competition squad. He is a Red Pepper and a member of Skills USA. After graduation, Caden will attend a four-year university to pursue a degree in radiology while being a collegiate cheerleader. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ashley Ivey. Our sixth candidate is Miss Anna Purvis. She is a daughter of Mr. Rob Purvis and Mrs. Rebecca Stewart. Anna is a varsity tennis player. As the senior class president, Anna is a student body executive member. She is your 2023 Red Pepper Vice Cayenne, the Interact, Interact Club Vice President, a member of National Honor Society, DECA, FBLA, and an inspired presenter. After graduation, Anna will attend a four-year university to pursue a bachelor's degree. Anna is being escorted this evening by Mr. Levi Douglas. Levi is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Douglas. Levi is a varsity soccer player. He's a member of National Honor Society, DECA, FCA, Student Council, and a Bleacher Bums officer. After graduation, Levi plans to attend a four-year university to pursue a bachelor's degree. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Anna Purvis. Our final candidate is Miss Julia Sanders. She is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John Sanders. Julia is a varsity cheerleader. She's a member of the Red Peppers, Link Crew, FBLA, Skills USA, and is an inspired presenter. After graduation, Julia will attend a university and major in biology. Julia is being escorted this evening by Mr. Zachary Yant. He is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Eric Yant. He is a member of the marching band and esports team. After graduation, Zachary plans to pursue a degree in forensic science at a four-year university. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Julia Sanders. The homecoming queen candidates were nominated by the fall senior varsity athletes and voted on by the student body. The homecoming queen will be announced here tonight at the halftime show and be crowned tonight at the homecoming dance at 1045. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that we announce the 2023 fall sports homecoming queen, Miss Olivia Gadbury.
Madison Jefferson Patterson, Michaela Prentice, Madison Sanders, and McKee McClellan. Sophomore, Marcasia Sawyer, and senior captain, Jasavia Hampton. Back at Saxton Public School Stadium, started the second half. It was all Cape Central in the first half, 33-0. We were talking to Mr. Rusty Hendricks, who kept the stats during the first half. He said uh, Cape Central over 300 yards. From total offense? Total offense. Okay. And Saxton with 46 yards total offense. Both Boyd and Thomas over 100 yards apiece. I would say that of their Cape Central's 300 yards, I would say the largest majority of that is on the ground. Well, obviously, if they're over yes. 200 rushing, because I was going to say I don't remember very many passing yards, but had a bunch of rushing. There's the kickoff. Oh, boy. And it's okay. bobbled and... Recover on the ground by the Bulldogs. Peyton Mitchell. Peyton Mitchell. Recovery for the Bulldogs. See if Saxton can get a drive going here at the start of the second half. You know, I feel like a couple of times we've, <clears throat> excuse me, we've moved the ball and we mm -hmm. just sort of get into a third and long. The next thing you know, it sputters out. I, I will say knock on wood. Not whatever that the turnover bug has not bitten us, and yeah, just <laughs> boy, way to go there, Tony Romo. I picked right up on that one too, didn't I? Holy moly! Never mind. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Thanks, Mr. Lindsay. I, I was not trying to predict that. I was, I was actually trying. <laughs> Holy cow! <clears throat> well. Bulldogs. <laughs> I guess we actually didn't turn it over, though. Is there a flag down? No, nope, I thought there was a flag. Bulldogs recovered that fumble. Pass out to the left here. Nice reception. Still on his feet. Good tackle. Open field tackle. Caden Craig with the reception. So we picked up. Patterson with oh, excuse the me. reception. We're in third and third. 11. Gadbury cannot make the completion on this attempt. It's going to bring up fourth and 11. Bulldogs will be kicking into that wind, which is picked up straight out of the north. Yeah, I was down there in it at halftime. <laughs> it's Temperature <coughs> has dropped. It's, uh, it's just 61. It seems like about 41. Yeah, that wind chill. <clears throat> uh -huh. I don't think there's any danger of it being called by cold weather at 60 degrees, but it sure is chilly. <clears throat> Here's the punt. Goes about 20 yards or so before heading out of bounds. Not the 53, right, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> Just going to be inside Sykeston territory. Maybe not. We'll see where the 
officials spot the ball. I was looking at the official over here on yeah, the sideline. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's going to be at the 49. He caught it literally almost like the 45. That's, that is the 51, Mr. Bidener, yes. <clears throat> Hand off to Thomas. Cuts it back, and he's still on his feet. Oh, Very quick feet. He has. Stiff arm. <laughs> <Woo>. <clears throat> Thomas is thinking, hey, Boyd had 180 yards first <laughs> half. I only had 130, so I got to catch up to him. Jeff, I remember going to the Cape game up there when both teams were even better, and it was about 40 degrees and raining. Do you remember that? I, I do. Holy moly, yeah. what a game. <clears throat> it was so cold that night, too. I was thinking, what in the world are we doing here in this rain? Finally... It was cold at first, but it, it got it started raining, and then we ended up leaving, and then we watched some of it from the car. <clears throat> I remember back in, my brother was in high school, I remember him telling me we played Cape Central on Halloween night, and it snowed. <laughs> it was like in 93 I that. or 94 or it something was, around yeah. there. <clears throat> I remember that night, I yeah. do. I was coaching uh, junior high oh, basketball yeah. at Richland. And it snowed on us that night on, uh -huh. the, on the way back from wherever we played that night. Yeah. Jeff, as Mr. Byler just pointed out, they ran a slant. It was wide open. <clears throat> a little rule that's different, I guess, from football than basketball as far as the scoring. Anytime a team goes up by 35 in the second half, it is a continuous clock. In basketball, it's only in the fourth quarter. In football, it's the entire second half. Looks like that's the case. There's a touchdown, so that takes the score up to 39. Thomas and Boyd have taken turns running these Tigers right down the field. We're kind of discussing that up here. I think it, like after a score, maybe stops change of, no, probably not even change of possession. Maybe after a score. <clears throat> but it will be a fairly continuous clock. But we're in just almost under. The heck? And he scores. <laughs> I don't know if that was a design say, play. I'm not sure that that was. That didn't look like a design to play. It was a fairly high snap. Mm -hmm. The holder just grabbed it and took off running, and he dove into the end zone for the two-point conversion. 41 zip. Tigers. Yeah, I got a couple of uh, Dodgers fans over here giving me grief. Want to know if I was going to give them the Cardinal game update. Yeah, thanks a lot, fellas. Uh, no comment there. <laughs> we don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no, no, there will be no October baseball this year. <clears throat> In, uh, I, st I stopped watching about July oh 7th. Oh, gosh. <sighs> it was... After the All-Star break, I mm. kind of gave up and yeah, didn't watch much. Wasn't it? Man. There's no joy in Mudville this year, is there? No. The only joy that I have is that the Cubs and the Yankees, neither one are in the playoffs, <laughs> along with the Cardinals. <laughs> right. <clears throat> I saw a stat or something that said, mentioned that fact, and it was interesting that there's a flag, flag on two flags on the play. I can't remember what the actual statistics or the fact was that how many, however many years since all three of those teams have missed the playoffs. Now it's not that many for the the Cubs, <laughs> but it's more the Cardinals and the Yankees. <clears throat> I think uh, the Red Sox. I, I think I saw that too, and they were including the Red Sox as well. Maybe so. There we go. Uh, Mr. Mays just pointed that out. First time in 30 years, no Cardinals, Yankees, or Red Sox in the playoffs. There we go. 
Thank you, Mr. Mays. Go Sox. Well, I wasn't really thinking of that, but since you mentioned it. <laughs> Suddenly turned to October baseball up here in the booth. <clears throat> The Orioles are in it. I know Mr. Bidler is a big Maryland guy from Maryland originally. Probably saw his share of uh, Brooks Robinson back when he was a youngster. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Only if I knew a guy that named his daughter after her. <laughs> or Cal Ripken. That's a debate in my house. Uh, <laughs> so Callie Brook was not named after it? She was... If it was if she was going to be a boy, it was going to be Cal. Okay. So we uh, changed it to Callie when we found out it was a girl. But yep. my wife swears that that wasn't the case. But <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Number four. Yeah, now it's. Bulldogs are going the wrong way. Yeah, we got her shifted in reverse here. About third and 20. Jeff, do we break out the double handoff here? Why not? Let's open up the playbook. Oh, no, I thought we were about to run out of play clock here, but we've got 15 seconds. Got Barry drops back. He's in the end zone. He finds a receiver. Oh. It's Hawk. Okay. All right. That was a nice catch. Yeah. Nice throw and a nice catch. <laughs> Kenneth Holcomb. And he was the one that went down right at the end of the half. Yeah, so right at the end of the half. He's okay. You look good on that one, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, we suspected a cramp, and I obviously he looked good on that play, and he's moving just fine, so looks like everything's okay. There's the punt. Good punt into the wind. Yeah. <clears throat> good tackle. Really good tackle. I was going to say, was that Sam McGill on the tackle? That a boy, Sam. Stick your nose in there and get you a tackle. Oh, it was six. Excuse me, Andrew Green. Yep, excuse me. Well, good job, and Andrew and, as well. And good job, Andrew. Exactly. <laughs> well, I was just, Sam's a freshman, and I was giving him some love there. But good job, Andrew. Good job. <clears throat> Central with a new quarterback. Is that 15? Would be Chapman Ogles? 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 Ogles. 6'3", sophomore. Yeah. Man, where are they growing these guys? That was a handoff to a different runner, too. That was uh, Tayshawn Arnold there. Look like. It looked like number 25. Job tackling there. First down, Cape Central.
Cape Central pitches one out to the left and the runner picks up about six or seven yards. That was Clemens on the run. Cape Central's got a fairly new, if not all new, uh, team in here. Maybe this Probably second a lot squad. Of the, yeah, yeah, junior varsity players. Yeah, yeah, don't know some of these names. I'm trying to find them here so they weren't the same names that we were referencing in the first half. Yeah, I don't think Thomas and Boyd are out there anymore. No, I don't think so, and I'm sure the uh, Spain I don't see him either. No. <clears throat> Bulldogs do a good job. Oh, oh, never did bring him down. That's, That's uh, 25, Tayshawn Arnold. Yeah. Senior running back for the Tigers. He's six foot 180. Yeah. Got a timeout on the field. Not sure why. Calling for the chains here. I guess that's why they're gonna measure here for a first down. Matt, do you have any uh, score updates from uh, around the area? I do. Give me <clears throat> just a second. Thank you to Mr. Rod Anderson. Let's see here. Scott City, 42-7 to over Chaffee in the third quarter. East Prairie, 37-0 at half over Donovan. Dexter, 21-0 over Kennett. Uh, Jackson 56-0 at half. Kelly up 26-0 over Hayti at half. New Madrid 27-6 over Perryville at half. And there's a Charleston score at the bottom, and it's oh, I can't see the rest of it. So it's a few of the scores from around the area. We appreciate the update. Thank you, Rod Anderson. Yes, sir. It's Arnold running again. It's and a great job of following his blocker. I don't know if you could see that, but just had his hand on their back and was just following them right up the field. Pushed out of bounds at the five yard line as the Cape Number Central running back. Is that Brajon Clemens? Clemens. <laughs> Brajon. Brajon Clemens. He's a sophomore. Second down and five.
Clemens shot, uh, stopped just short of the goal line. Brings up third down. Just a yard outside of the end zone. Jeff, before we get too far uh, away from it, oh, looks like Cape Central scored again. We'll make it 47 to zero. <clears throat> um, Miss Olivia Gadbury was named homecoming queen tonight. Congratulations to Olivia. The official crowning will take place at the homecoming at dance. The dance here. That's there's some some of the students have made a quick haste for the exit to get ready for the dance. I think it's probably already started. Oof. Again, I can't tell. Yep. Extra point, extra point, extra is, point good. is good. We have to re uh, rely on the officials <laughs> to give us the signal, <laughs> not our own <laughs> eyes. No, no. Those lying eyes, right? That's the end of the third quarter. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. Yep. Start of the fourth quarter, Cape Central kicks off after the touchdown to make it 48-0. And looks like Sexton has fumbled on the kickoff return. And Cape Central has recovered. It's like the ball, like it tried to catch it too high. Kind of hit him in the shoulder pads and the below the helmet just kind of popped out of there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. got the running clock High Ooh. snap. Whoa. Quarterback gets a nice bounce on that. And yeah, scrambles. Yeah. yeah. Just about That's completed it. Seven. Yeah. It's the first time we've seen him throw, uh, I think, this backup quarterback that's come in. He's a lefty. Mm -hmm. Or he threw that one lefty. Right. Yeah. He might be amphibious. He could throw both <laughs> hands. <laughs> <laughs> On land and water, huh? Yeah, and land or water. That's right. I don't know if you saw that, Matt, that college baseball pitcher that throws with both hands. Yeah, he's got the glove that he can. Yeah, and he throws like 95 right-handed and 91 left-handed. Oh. Wow. Carter Goodman. Carter Two Goodman. Big takeaways tonight. There's a little bit. We got a few more score updates here, Jeff, real quick. Let's Dexter, hear it. Dexter's up 21 6 over Kennett in the fourth quarter. Oh, new one here. Papa Bluff up, four, or excuse me, up. Tied 14 14 with Farmington uh, mm. in the fourth quarter. Okay. Scott City up 49 7 over Chaffee. And that's the three scores that I've got. Thanks, Rod. Appreciate it. 
Luke Gadbury on the keeper. Scampers ahead for maybe four or five. Bringing up second and six. Just under nine minutes to go. <clears throat> Bad snap. Gets away from Luke. Smartly falled, excuse me, picked up by Kenneth Holcomb, the freshman. Freshman playing some good minutes tonight. Did some really good things. Sykes is behind the chains now. Third and third and 616, Mr. By oh, <laughs> third and 16. Another fumble in a, oh. Oh, we got a late flag here. Might be roughing the passer. Yep, sure enough, roughing the passer. No. Is that an automatic first down, Jeff, roughing the passer? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, good grief. A 50-yard penalty or what? Wow. Clock still running. We're about seven and a half minutes left. Movement on Sykeston. Yep. You know, Jeff, seemed like we played a. I would say a fairly clean first half. Not, and we had a penalty or two. It didn't mm -hmm. seem like a lot, but now it seems like we're uh, losing our ability to focus here and just finish this thing out. Luke running for his life. Oh. Good and run by Gadbury. It really was. Mark him just a little short. Someone up here said Luke kind of looks like Baker Mayfield. He kind of does. Oh. Tell you what, the fact that he got out of that. An impressive throw, got a, yeah. Got a throw kind of off his back leg on the run. It was a nice throw. It was just about completed. Kenneth Holcomb again. We keep mentioning his name a lot. Tell you what, we haven't had a lot of freshmen that have, I mean, in, in recent memory, no. Jeff, that I can no. think of that have um, contributed a lot, and that's that's great to see. Another flag down. It looks like a hold. Looks like we picked up a first down, but going to be negated. Definitely enough for the first down, but negated by the hold here, probably. Five and a half minutes to go in the game. Officials are conferring for. <laughs> oh, personal foul. Not, what does that call? Uh, Sort of chopped his waist. I don't know what call that is. Did he put the belt on too tight or something? Or I'm not sure what that call is. I Jeff. don't know either. I, I'm not. I've never seen that one. Looking at your uh, handy yeah, dandy little, diagram. <laughs> handy dandy. Uh, don't, don't see that one. Chop block. Chop block. Oh, I thought that they easily did like. Whoa. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hmm. Just not much you can do there. A flag. Flag on the play. 
I wonder how there was a flag. I wonder what that was. Face mask, maybe? Just under four minutes remaining in the game at fourth down. I'm not sure what the flag be for, but he's personal foul. Hit to the head. I guess that's what that is. No. Bulldogs keep the chains moving. Cape Central sort of, well, no, they didn't. No, that is not an automatic <coughs> first down. I, I thought, okay. I thought all, <laughs> um, see, that's where I get confused here. They don't get a lot of, a lot of description here. Gadbury with a long throw. Oh, where, is pass interference? No, no. No P.I. there. Gadbury's got the wind out of the back, mm -hmm. and he aired that one out. He did. That was a nice throw. Just passing three minutes remaining in fourth and eight. I'm sure the Bulldogs will stay on the field. Try to pick up this first down, keep this drive alive. Under about two and a half minutes remaining. Cape Central with us to sell out blitz. Oh, wow. Nice play. Nice play. Tell you what, Luke evaded some tackles. Hey, well, that was a heck of a catch. Daryl Jordan. Wow. Jeff, he went up and high pointed that thing. He did. Looked like he's got. Big hands, grabbed hold of that thing and picked it out of the air. Right at the marker, turned up field and picked up a couple extra. Nice play. Two minutes left in this ball game. See if the Bulldogs can punch one in. There's another completion. All right. First down. I was watching, that was Keodric Sherrod, but I was watching the Holcomb kid, he was running what's called a drag route where you sort of just slide under the defense in between the line of scrimmage and the defense. And he was open as well, but good read by Luke to pick up Keodrick for a first down. Mm. Oh. Got a little extracurricular activity here. And Timeout, Sykeston. Bulldogs are trying to put something together. Get one in the end Thank zone before the end of this ball game. Was there a penalty there? Yeah, there was. What? Like an unsportsmanlike conduct. Bulldog first down on the about the eleven, maybe. And the, they can, the Bulldogs can get another first down without scoring. Resetting the game clock from 49 seconds to 125. The Bulldogs are running a couple of plays here, probably getting two in at once maybe. Gadbury drops back, throws to the end zone, and no, no completion. 
Clock's still moving. That's why I figured they would. No, nope, they're calling in a play now. I thought they would. Sometimes in those late game situations, Jeff, after a timeout, they'll set two or three in at once, mm -hmm. so they just immediately roll into it. <clears throat> We're under a minute now. Oh, a quick, mm. quick hitter. It's, uh, Called. Timeout, Sykeston again. Sykeston. Somebody came up a little lame there. Who is that? Is that 68? Hayden Hess. That's the senior. Let's see if Sykes can get this in there from the on the four, maybe. It's obviously four down territory. Clock will be running. Sykeston has one timeout remaining. They're going to get this, punch it in, as Jeff said. See what they can do here. Hmm. Interesting call. Throw sells out of the back of the end zone. So brings up fourth clock's, down. Yep, clock's still moving. Oh, we call timeout. Saxon took his last time out, Jeff. Fourth and five, and trying to score here. I mean, heck, do you kick it now? No, they're going to go for the touchdown. You got a pretty good shot of kicking, kicking that one, but Coach Gibbs is on the field. I'm not sure what's going on there. Passing play, oh, running Debbie play. Running up the Hold. middle. There's a flag, flag on the call play. holding, I'm sure. Touchdown, flag on the play. Clock does stop on that. It's gotta be a hold, it's in the backfield, yep. Oh, oh a face mask. Oh, really, okay. Oh, well. All right, Sykeston. Okay, all right. Nice run well, by Gadbury. Yeah. Looked like a uh, designed pass play, and he just took off. And yeah, it looks like the uh, protection broke down a little bit. And Luke stepped up in the pocket and didn't stop stepping up. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. He scored. Nice play, Luke Gadbury. Plus he's going for two, 48 to six, trying to get the eight. Well, that was a, okay, it's 48 to eight. That was a. Uh, Sherrod. Yeah, that, that looked like, that was a, I'm trying to describe it. It looked it. a little confusing. Yeah, it looked like, like he, it almost looked like Keandre just took it from him. Yeah, he said, okay, here it is. I'm going to take it from <laughs> you and run in for the, yeah. for it the worked. conversion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably the last play of the game. So that will do it. Yep, yep. Clock is running. 48-8. That is it, Jeff. Jeff, thanks for uh, uh, pre Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for having me up here Deej. tonight. Hope you're feeling better, buddy. Uh, thanks to Mr. Jeff Williams for filling in tonight on a uh, late notice, so to speak. It's glad to do it. Yeah. 
And before we get off here, I always like to thank Mr. Beidler and his crew for providing the outstanding service to our district, uh, providing the home games, uh, fantastic audio and visual, and the graphics, and all those things to always quality. Thank you, Mr. Beidler and your crew for that. Until next time, go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs>